Yes. Kellyanne Conway, senior advisor to President elect Donald Trump, who certainly has his ear, is joining us in the studio because you were speaking to the President elect <laughs> just moments ago. He calls his Literally we right as we're sitting here. That's, um, that's the President elect, always engaged. So he fired off a series of tweets yesterday, and this is what caused this firestorm. We'll get you to respond to uh, this morning how this went. But he, he sent this yesterday morning during our show. Well, this is the one that went out last night. This is the one that came out later in the day. Because there were two in the morning, talked about all talk, no action. And then later in the evening, he wrote, Congressman John Lewis should find Finally, focus on the burning and, and crime infested inner cities of the U.S. I can use all the help I can get. His point is there's problems that need to be fixed. This isn't about. And we about like to work together. I mean, exactly. John, look, Donald Trump went out there and he boldly went where very few Republicans would ever go before. He went to the inner cities and he said, What do you have to lose? And many responded. He got a higher percentage of the African American vote than did Mitt Romney or John McCain. And people heard that message. He was talking about better schools, he was talking about jobs and opportunity, he's talking about fixing the infrastructure in the inner cities, reducing crime and drugs. But he needs the help of people like Congressman John Lewis and others. And I would just say we all, everyone agrees that Congressman Lewis is a civil rights and voting rights right. leader. And he's, he deserves um, our praise for that. But it is disappointing to hear somebody who has such an important voice and platform to say what he said about the president, which, by the way, is just false. He is a, he is a legitimate president. He won over 2,700 counties. He flipped 200 President Obama counties, and now Donald Trump counties. Mm -hmm. And in, in John Lewis's state of Georgia, Donald Trump won by five points, and he won 128 counties. Hillary Clinton won 31 counties in Georgia. So we need to work together to, to help the inner cities and everyone else in America, and we would like his help. Right. No, and here's the interesting thing, though. The, the tweet that he sent out yesterday, and we, we reported on our show, it didn't have anything to do with race. It didn't have anything to do with, with John Lewis's past. And you saw how it played out yesterday with Democrats tweeting about this, the mainstream media turning it into that debate. What did you make of that? Abby, disappointing, but not surprising. Mm -hmm. The media got this party started earlier in the week by talking about and publishing the fake news to call into question Donald Trump's election. That, that's where the irresponsibility started. And here we are at the end of the week still talking about it in a different form. Um, that Donald Trump, as president, as the newly elected president, in those wee hours of November 9th, made very clear he is going to be the president to all Americans, including those who did not support him. That has never changed. His inaugural address will be very visionary, will be very inclusive. And, and I really hope those who are planning protests and hashtag not Already have been protesting. Hashtag he is your president. Get on board. Do you think that they're trying to bait him? that this is a fundraising effort because we're seeing now emails going out in an effort to try to raise money on the Democratic side and they're they're trying to get under the president-elect's skin. He's a pre-planned. And, pre yeah. and then he jumps on Twitter. I, I guess the question is, you have his ear, why would he swing at pitches in the dirt? Does he need to do that anymore? Well, he has the right to defend himself and he is famously the counterpuncher. If you go back and look, Donald Trump rarely draws first blood. I really respect that about him and I actually share that trait. He doesn't run around gratuitously picking fights. He's president of the United States. He's going to fix this economy and bring these jobs back from Mexico and China. It's already happening. Look at these private industries reducing the cost of goods and services, keeping jobs here, bringing them, canceling plans to have their factories move to Mexico. He's already a man of action. And, and in in fact, but, but when he's attacked, everybody just says he should be the bigger man. Why is he attacked in the first place? I'm not saying be the bigger man. I'm just no. saying, should he just ignore it? <laughs> like, you know, he a lot of these voices. Let me tell you something. That man ignores plenty. Mm -hmm. He has had an unprecedented deluge of attacks gratuitous and personal attacks against him. I, I actually think it's the strength of a leader, somebody who can make himself so impervious to most of his naysayers and critics. But he also is responding, uh, lady and gentlemen, because he has a great message and a plan for our inner cities and for the rest of America. And we want everybody at this time to come together and say, let's give this man his opportunity to execute on this plan. These kids are in failing schools. They are trapped by the zip code where they live. He's the guy who believes in charters and school choice and educational reform for them. Speaking of an opportunity to come together on Friday, uh, the president-elect will be sworn in as the 45th president of these United States, whether people like it or not. Um, and, and there are, but there are some performers. You've heard about the, the inauguration. It's going to be an inauguration of the people. But one okay. performer in particular, Jennifer Holliday, backed out just yesterday be, from pressure online about LGBT and gay rights is what she says. Here's what she had to say, a little bit uh, of, of her quote. In light of the information pointed out to me via the Daily Beast article on, on yesterday, my only choice now must be to 
stand with the LGBT community and state unequivocally that I will not perform for the welcome concert for any of the in, in, uh, inauguration festivities. Uh, what do you say to her? Do people oh. even care, Kellyanne? Kellyanne, do people even care that celebrities are backing out of this thing? Uh, probably not. That's a different question. I'm disappointed that she canceled based on an article or based on, you know, some folks yeah. expressing their opinion. I wish she had called one of us and actually gotten access to what the president-elect's feeling on any of this is. But you said it best. This is the people's inauguration. It certainly was the people's election. Donald Trump took his message directly to folks over the media, around the naysayers, many of whom were in his own party. Mm -hmm. uh, and and he took the he is a master connector. I've never met such a brilliant communicator in my life. And he was able to communicate and connect directly with the people. The inauguration will be the same. And for all those who are screaming and trying to protest. Let's not lose sight, folks, of the millions and millions and millions of Americans who are truly so excited and so moved about his inauguration. Well, as, as a fan of history, I, I'm, I'm excited to see this. You mentioned as a master communicator, we've had some amazing inauguration speeches in American history. Abraham Lincoln's second inaugural, right, trying to bring this country yeah. together. Uh, you have, you know, John F. Kennedy's inauguration. What can we expect? Take us behind the scenes a little bit, if you will. Maybe the first few drafts of the inaugural <laughs> script. Can you give us a little insight into what we're going to hear from Mr. Trump? It's definitely Donald, choices, uh, Donald Trump's uh, choices and voices within that speech. And I think you'll see a very visionary, uplifting, aspirational, optimistic. That's who he was, especially towards the end of the campaign. Hillary Clinton never pivoted to an aspirational, optimistic, inclusive message, ironically. Her message was, Donald Trump bad, I'm not Donald Trump. His mm -hmm. was much more forgotten man, forgotten woman. Here are the specifics of what I will do for this country, for all Americans. You'll hear some of that. Mm -hmm. And I think it'd be very, anybody who comes away from that with an unjaundiced eye and a fair, you know, looking at it very fairly, will see a man who wants to be the president of all Americans and intends to be no matter who is trying to legitimize him, no matter who's criticizing, no matter what media are lying about him and what was or was not said to him. He is the bigger person. And I think people, when they see him out on that dais, they should remember this man comes to Washington owing no one anything. Yeah. And how refreshing it is to have somebody with that enormous successful experience but outside of government, outside of politics, and the enormous sacrifices that he and his family are making just for him to serve all of us. It already tells you that he's why he's there. He's there for the people. He's not there for himself. He gave up the riches, yeah. the status, the prestige, the power well, to do this. You have President Obama doing a bit of a farewell um, tour. He was on 60 Minutes recently and, and giving uh, President -elect Trump some advice, saying he does need to change his ways once he gets into office. Here's what he said. He's an unconventional candidate. Um, I don't think there's anybody who's run a campaign like his successfully in modern history, not that I can think of. Because he didn't have the supports of many of the establishment in his own party, because he ran sort of a improvisational campaign. Can you run an improvisational presidency? I don't think so. And, and, and so now he's in the process of building up an organization. Uh, and we'll, we'll have to see how that works, um, and, and, and it'll be a test, I think, for him and the people that, uh, that he's designated uh, to, to be able to execute on, on his vision. So saying he can't be an improvisational president. Not exactly hashtag breaking news, but let me just say, for the first time in many years, we have the White House, the House, and the Senate. And so you will see this man do make positive change very quickly, make good on his promises, on his plans, really, because for him, he's not a politician. They weren't campaign promises. It was the vision of a successful businessman. I, I would say I, I can't help but think that President Obama, who's been really great to the president-elect, as has the first lady and as has the senior team, uh, to those of us who are coming in, I can't help but think that they're a little worried that with the mm. swipe of a pen starting uh, Monday, January yeah, 23rd, about that. President well, Trump will undo a lot of the corrosive regulations that we hear every day are strangleholding which small ones businesses. Day one, should we be anticipating? I won't tell you specifically, but I will tell you that it will feel very differently. There will be some that have to just these draconian regulations that are either duplicative or really aren't, if you look at them from a best practices perspective, you see that they're hurting more people than they're yeah. helping, and we don't need them. And, and so Donald Trump will undo that. And look, somebody's legacy, a legacy by definition means things that are lasting and durable, not boxes mm -hmm. that you checked while you were there <laughs> that, that, that the people don't want. And look, the biggest one, of course, right now, 
is repealing and replacing Obamacare. And steps were made toward that this very week in the Senate. One of the things that uh, President-elect Trump had talked about, I think, a few weeks ago in that 60 Minutes interview was about James Comey and whether or not he should resign. And he said, oh, I want to you know, meet with him. I want to talk with him. I, I don't know. I don't know yet. Uh, and I like that response. He said, I'm not going to fire someone if I... Well, where, where does he sit on that issue now? Well, he'll make that judgment and that announcement when he wants me. I can speak from my perspective. I'm always disappointed at just how public and sometimes political some of these figures seem to be. I'm very concerned, very concerned. And people should realize it is the Trump team, only us at this point, who are not divulging what occurred in a classified briefing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's called a classified briefing for a minute. You have the Vice President of the United States making a comment about it the other day. You have intelligence officials confirming or denying. This is classified information. Why is it top secret? It's top <clears throat> secret not to keep it from public, but to protect the public. Sure. And I very much respect the fact that the president-elect, the vice president-elect, our incoming chief of staff, others who are incoming press secretary, others who were in that room, are keeping quiet about the specifics. That you, that's the way it must be. Um, but look, <clears throat> this is going to be Donald Trump's presidency very quickly. And everything that he set out to do, you will see in motion very quickly. He said he's going to build the wall and have Mexico pay for it. He'll repeal and replace Obamacare, even as people who rely upon that right now will mm -hmm. not be without coverage. But why not buy it across state lines like you can everything sure. else in this Amazon.com economy? Why not have a health savings account with your name on it that you own so that you control your health care spending more? Why not block grant Medicaid to the states? So yeah, that people there, yeah. who are closest to the people can administer it properly. Quick question. Uh, the failing New York Times, as Mr. Trump uh, points out, reported just today that uh, he wants to, they're saying he wants to meet with Putin in Reykjavik, Iceland. Uh, can you confirm or deny that? I can deny that that's ever been discussed. Um, I got confirmation of that last night because it struck me as odd. Why are they uh, reporting that then? Well, but I think people are trying to say that, his, that this will be his, first of all, they like connecting his name with the Russian leader's name anytime they yep. can. That's number one. Uh, number two, it, they, they like to presume they know exactly what he's going to do, just as they knew he was going to lose spectacularly. I mean, betting against Donald Trump and reading his mind are fool's errands. And I would just <laughs> You would know point. better than anyone well, else. Well, yeah, that's that's a good point. There's a difference between improvisational and unpredictable. And that's right. being unpredictable has value. Have they spoken at all, though, Vladimir Putin and... And Trump said that, that one time that everyone knows about, mm -hmm. I think early on after after Mr. Trump won the presidency and he's talked to 100 leaders, he sure. and Vice President-elect Pence. Mm -hmm. That's what leaders do. They, they speak to other people and he's also been incredibly respectful of the fact yeah. that he's spoken to them by phone with very few exceptions, not met with them because we have one president at a time at least for the next right. five days. Kelly and Conway, you got a busy week ahead of you. We'll let you. Good luck this week. Thank you so Thanks much.